Hi Booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different for you. I'm combining um, a deeper look into Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell with a vlog here in Singapore. Um, a few of you have um, requested to see more of Singapore. I've already done two vlogs of Singapore and I'll link those down below. One at McRitchie Reservoir and one um, at Marina Bay Sands. Um, this one though, I got the idea from Rachel, from Rachel's Reading Nook. She talked about a book and then she showed an area with a vlog. Um, and I thought that was a fantastic idea. I'll link Rachel's channel down below as well. So I'm going to be taking you to Gardens by the Bay, which was one of the um, big tourist attractions here in Singapore. Um, although at the moment we don't have any tourists, there are no tourists allowed in Singapore. But um, so I thought we'd go there. It consists of two domes, um, the Cloud Forest Dome we'll go to first, and then we'll go on to the Flower Dome. Um, I'm currently sitting in the Indian Garden, part of the outside um, near the dome. and. I'm in the shade, but I apologise because I'm sweating profusely because it is about 33 degrees at the moment. should just say apologies for the mask, but by law I have to um, wear it at all times outside. Um, and I should just say this video also comes with a bit of a warning that there are going to be a lot of plants. <laughs> so um, I hope you'll find it inter interesting and let's, let's get started. So that you get some sense of where we are headed to, there are the super trees which featured in the Crazy Rich Asians film. And if I pan around, there you can see the domes which we are heading to for Gardens by the Bay, the Cloud Forest and the Flower Dome. So this is in the cloud forest now. So you can see all of the, all that grid outer part is the outside of the dome. And we're working our way around and upwards. So we're gonna go right towards the top of the dome. So that bit there is part of the pathway that takes you up. So Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I read this book um, at the beginning of this month and thought the writing was fantastic. I read a few of Maggie O'Farrell's books and really, really loved the writing. Um, usually she writes um, contemporary, but this one is historical fiction and is set in 16th century England and of course tells the real story of Shakespeare and his family. Now, um, following reading this book and giving it five stars, I um, just also wanted to say I watched a fantastic video of Maggie O'Farrell having a chat with Simon Savage, one of our own book booktubers, one of our huge booktubers, with his mum, Louise. And it's a fantastic interview and I will um, link it down below where she, Maggie talks all about the book and some of her reasons behind. So some of them I'll lift to talk about here now. The structure of the book is in two timelines. So we are in 16th century England and we go between Shakespeare being a young lad when he starts off being a Latin tutor um, and falling in love with Agnes as um, youngsters until their current day, if you like, when, um, when they've got three children, they're both parents and we're further on and he's a playwright by that stage. This is unbelievable. I can't get all the plants in. This just goes on and on and on up to the top here, right at the very top where we're going to be walking to, right up to there. It's incredible the amount of plants here. And look, there is Marina Bay Sands. Hopefully you can hear me because I've got running water behind me, so it's making it quite noisy. There's a pan around here. Some of this is part of the display 
that is on at the moment, the glass in bloom. So all of that bit there is actually glass. It's amazing. Now, this book could actually be called a family saga, really, because it is about lots of different aspects of um, a family, Shakespeare's family. Um, I almost think this book could have been called Agnes, who is Shakespeare's wife, because for me, she is the central character of this book. And the reason I brought you to Gardens by the Bay is because she um, has a wonderful relationship with plants. She knows them inside out and people come to her for um, herbs and plants, for healing properties and um, she's like a herbologist and, and has all the medicinal remedies with the plants and through the book she has this relationship and she's always tending to her plants and this this wonderful nature element runs through the book so I thought what better way than to bring you to a place where there are going to be so many plants. Now she of course is more known as Anne Hathaway her father, Richard Hathaway, um, was a sheep farmer and he unfortunately died the year before um, Agnes and Shakespeare married. But apparently in his will, so Maggie O'Farrell says, he named Anne Hathaway as Agnes in, um, in his will. So Maggie O'Farrell thought it would be really lovely to actually pick up on her her name um, in this novel and it is um, she for me is a fascinating character the way she handles all the different family elements the way that she is as a wife and handles Shakespeare in the way that his career develops and how she is as a parent as well um, and of course as you see her grief as we go later on as well and the extent of her love um, for Shakespeare as well. There's actually so many plants in one area that I'm really struggling actually to get it all into shot because there is just so many plants compacted into one area going up, down, across. Absolutely stunning, stunning plants. Now, Shakespeare himself, whose family we are talking about throughout this book, interestingly, he is not named throughout the whole novel. And when Simon and Louise Savage asked Maggie about this, she said that she made the decision that it was just too incongruous to name him doing mund the mundane things of life. So she actually chose not to have him named. Um, but it's she loved the fact that we could bring a different interpretation to this man throughout this book. Um, we come away from the world famous playwright, if you like, and we see him in, um, we see him growing up, we're seeing him being a young lad, falling in love with Agnes and being besotted by her. You see the struggles he's having in his own family. You see him, as I say, as the lover, you see him as a parent and you see him, the extent to which he loves his, um, his children and um, and how that plays out and how he deals with grief later on as well. So yeah, a very different side to the great man himself. So we are now in the flower dome now. So the second dome and this is the exhibition that is on at the moment. This changes throughout the year and this is Glass in Bloom by Dale Chihuly, I think you pronounce his name. He's an American artist. So I'm looking forward to seeing lots of flowers and plants that have been made out of glass as well as the real thing. Look at that, that's amazing as an entrance. all made from glass. So each area of this dome is in all different zones, if you like, and from different parts of the world. So this one is actually from the South African area. 
all these plants um, originate from South Africa. Now, obviously the children and the sibling relationships play um, a, quite a role in this book. Um, Shakespeare and Agnes have three children. They have the twins, Judith and Hamnet, and they have also Susanna as well. And their dynamic between the three children is very, very interesting. And of course, we always get that special dimension between twins as well. Um, there is also the sibling relationship between Eliza, who is um, Shakespeare's sister. And she plays an important role actually with Agnes when she goes to live in Shakespeare's home because Shakespeare's mum does not take too kindly to this young girl who is pregnant with her son's child. And Eliza becomes quite an ally in this house and clearly, you would think, like her brother, she is probably very smart and she picks up and she wants to learn and she perceives that Agnes has something quite special in her knowledge of plants and medicinal elements. And she seems to be like a sponge wanting to soak up the knowledge that Agnes can impart to her. Um, there is also a lovely sibling relationship with Agnes and her brother Bartholomew. I loved that relationship um, because her stepmother is really horrible to her and Bartholomew takes over the farm and he's really protective of Agnes and that runs through all the way through so I loved, loved their relationship. if you can see over there but actually there's a bride and groom having their photos taken here in Singapore it's really popular to have pre-wedding photos oh romantic so here's another big part of the glass in bloom section it's beautiful that part that pink one in the middle there completely made of glass and then some of these around the edges the purple uprights and the pink underneath are all in glass as well in amongst all the real flowers Now, it's obvious from what we've said about grief being one of the main themes of this book that um, illness, there's serious illness at the start of this, of the start of this novel, and it's the plague. And um, as Maggie O'Farrell says, I mean, people kept comparing the plague to um, COVID. And ironically, her book was set to be published um, in a COVID year last year. Um, but she said that when she looked into more about the plague, obviously it was horrific in the way that it would rip round families and completely healthy 20 year olds would be dying within 24 hours. So she makes this in the book, the beginning, clearly one of the children is very, very unwell. And I'm sure by now you've worked out who it is, but one of them obviously dies of the plague and grief is a huge part of this novel. So you have this love that builds up for about for two thirds, I'd say, of the book. And then we get to the point where a death occurs. And then we have this last third, which portrays grief. And it is incredible, incredible writing. And I love the way it's all woven into Shakespeare, more as the Shakespeare that we know it by now. Um, and we link it in to his, his plays. And of course, um, if we did not have the death of this child, we would not have um, 
the play that we have today, the very famous Shakespearean play, Hamlet. Um, and that's, that's really quite interesting, isn't it? That it all actually goes on the death of a child and it's all linked to how Shakespeare, in actual fact, deals, doesn't deal with the death of one of his children. This is always a favorite part of the dome for me, the African zone. And I love these baobab trees and their huge um, trunks there. I love those. And look at this. Look at that trunk. Love that. And then this is lots of succulents you get in this area as well. A bit scary, this one. The dragon all made of wood. Looking over everybody from his treetop there. So just in conclusion, I would say, don't hesitate to pick up this book. Um, it won the Women's Prize of Fiction last year for a reason. Interestingly, Maggie says in that interview that she had the idea originally in 2013, but she was a little superstitious about the fact that she wanted all her children, her own children, to get past the age of the, the age that the child in this book um, dies. It was something that she just felt she couldn't write it until. So it was literally just a couple of lines in her journal that she got the idea from and it grew and grew from there. And she did a huge amount of research on how the family had been established in Stratford and how, of course, Shakespeare did travel regularly to London um, to put on these plays. Um, so yeah, absolutely fascinating, really, really wonderful writing, and um, I would thoroughly recommend. So there you go, I hope that you've enjoyed this review out in the hot and humid weather of Singapore, um, amongst all the plants. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the beauty of the plants today. And if you are looking for a historical fiction book, um, which has an element of the truth in it, and is about family, love, loss and grief then um then i'd give this a go please comment in the um section down below um if you have read this book or you're looking forward to it or any other maggie o'farrell books you'd like to comment on um i will come to you again with a video very soon take care bye